Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Geometry One. I'm out for today. It's Friday. Um, sorry about that, guys. I got a sick kid at home. Got to go stay home and be super dad. Uh, this is actually an okay lesson, maybe for me to be gone for and do this recording. So do your best to try this out. I'm going to skip over a couple things on the notes. Um, you'll notice the title has the word algebra in it. Has the word proof in it. We're going to start at um, the end of this chapter. Is really about introducing geometric proof. We're going to spend a lot of time on that throughout the first semester, so I want to make sure you're exposed to it, sort of in a friendlier setting, building on your algebra skills from last, the last class you took. So you'll also notice on your title has a little 2.5 on here on your paper. That's because technically this is chapter 2 in your textbook, because we're going to the Common Core curriculum, which is not a textbook curriculum. Um, we kind of blend certain chapters together. Um, it actually makes a much smoother transition for you guys because it takes all the vocab you guys just did on the quiz yesterday and kind of implements it into some, some geometry problems that are a little more smoother understanding than doing the beginning of chapter two. So without further ado, I'm going to jump in here and move forward here. Um, we've got these two photos on here um, of a celebrity back in the 90s who got arrested for killing someone and accused of that. And I want to talk about what it means to be proven guilty. You know, we hear that expression, innocent until proven guilty. I'm going to talk more about this on Monday, so I'm going to have you skip over the beginning of this, but think about, you know, while you're, before you move on, think about what it means to prove someone is guilty, or think about what it means to prove something. And we'll get into sort of, you know, they have that little bubble chart on your paper. We'll get into filling this in by brainstorming some synonyms of prove. I don't want to do that now. I'm going to leave that out, and we'll jump to jump right into the geometry part of it. We'll talk a lot about proof and what that verb means. So on your paper you have a whole bunch of blanks on the left hand side of your page and I sort of divided into, into three groups. These first four are the basic algebraic properties that you already know. Take a minute and write those down. You may want to pause me on this. These three in the middle are three new terms you've probably not seen much of, if at all, these three here. And then the bottom two are ones you've heard from algebra as well. Substitution and distribution, or distributive property. So the first property you know very, very well. You know, if you're given a basic equation, A is equal to B, and I take one side of the equation, take the A side of the equation, I add C to it, it would make sense I'd have to do the same thing to the right side of the equation. Let's see if I can do this with the mouse. Not very well, but you can see my mouse on there a little bit. So we've got B plus C because I've added C to both sides. Pretty, pretty obvious little statement on there. That's called the addition property of equality, which just says you can add things to both sides of an equation. Now, why am I going over that? You're going to be using these words to describe how you solve a problem later on. That's what I'm sort of getting our feet wet on. So these are going to be sort of the answers to some of your questions later on, the answers to, to why you're able to solve an equation. Um, next one is just a quick little review of the subtraction property. If you have an equation A is equal to B, and you subtract C on the left side, well, it's obvious you're going to have to subtract C on the right side. So B minus C would still be equal to that other equation. And you can see on the third one, I've got A equal to B again. I've put this sort of implied multiplication, A times C on the left side. Well, of course, that has to be equal to B times C on the right side. Nothing amazing you call that multiplication. And the last one is pretty obvious in that little group. A is equal to B. I've divided the left side by C. I would have to divide the right side by C as well. It's a division sign if you can't see that very well on your screen. B divided by C. Then we get into these new terms, something called the reflexive, not reflective, reflexive property. And the re reflexive property just says that something like this, A, is equal to A. Think about what word would go there. A is equal to, hopefully you're thinking the word itself. Something, something equal, equal to itself, it's called the reflexive property. And you should be thinking to yourself, why would I ever need to know that? You'll see later on. It's sort of something that's going to come up later on in, prop, in uh, proofs, geometric proofs later on. So just bear with me. All, for today, I want to make sure when you see something, you know, an equation equal to itself, x is equal to x, 10 is equal to 10, you understand that's called the reflexive property. Like I said, it's more relevant later on. Um, you may have heard something called the identity property or something like that before in Algebra 1. It's sort of related to that same concept. Um, symmetry, I think you've seen the word symmetric or symmetry before. Symmetry... You know, you think of a butterfly, the left side of the butterfly is the same as the right side of the butterfly. It's basically saying that you can take an equation, you can flip it around. 
So, you know, sometimes you might have a problem A equals B. The other way to write that is obviously B equals A. When you flip an equation, that's called the symmetric property. It might seem so obvious, why would they even name that a property? They just, they've got a name for it. It comes up sometimes in algebra when you get to the end of a problem and you have like 7 is equal to x. Well, nobody writes their answer 7 equals x. Everybody always flips that around and writes x equals 7 at the end. That's the symmetric property. And the last one here is called the transitive property. Of course, the prefix trans means to go across. So this is comparing usually three or four things and you're working across a bunch of equations. Read this to yourself for a second. a is equal to b and then it says b is equal to c. There's sort of an obvious conclusion here about A now. What can you conclude that A must be equal to? Hopefully you go, oh, duh, A's got to be equal to C. Because they're both, A and C are both equal to B in these equations. This is basically just a way of comparing three or more things. And if you know the first two things are equal to some common value like B, then the first two things are equal to each other. So it's you know just a way of comparing multiple things. Like we might have three different triangles. And if the first two triangles are congruent to a third triangle, then the first two triangles are congruent to each other. It's all the same. Again, we just want to make sure you're familiar with these names. Uh, the last one, just uh, substitution. That's my property today. You know, you got a substitute today. I'm looking for a synonym for substitute right here. So if A is equal to B, A can be, you could write substitute, but I don't want to use that. Use a synonym. A can be, what's the teacher doing right now? Ah, he's replacing me. The old replacements movie. So replacement and substitution are the same thing. You know, I want you to think of it as a, as a synonymous term on there. You can replace, you know, a value if something's equal. Duh, you already know that. You've been doing substitution a lot, actually, on that quiz you took yesterday, even. And the last one, the distributive property. What's the other way to write this? Well, you could distribute it. A times B and A times C, or AB plus AC. So these are the properties you'll primarily, primarily be using on your homework. And I'll show you what that looks like in the next example. I'm going to skip this little question here. Which of these properties are new to you? I'm assuming these are the three new ones. And I'll give you a catchy way to remember them. Um, and it's as easy as one, two, three. I'll give that to you on Monday. I'll talk about that on Monday so you remember which one's which. When you're doing your homework today, just flip to this page and look at it um, instead of worrying about a way to memorize them right now. All right, so here's, we'll dive in here in the next example. here. I'm going to pause this thing and start a new video because I usually lose it after seven minutes. So I'll be back in a minute in uh, part two.